Welcome aboard. Today I'll show you a build on my new Cadenas class Dreadnought. Using my discovery science tool for this, I'm creating a mixed beam EPG build based on Tetran weapon. In front, it uses the Neutronic Torpedo Launcher. This is from the Delta Reputation. Here I have the two-piece set, the torpedo and its console. The torpedo does kinetic damage and radiation damage. Radiation damage is pushed by the EPG consoles. Its console Gives me more power to subsystems, higher shield capacity, and it reduces the cooldown on bridge officer abilities. The two piece set bonus is more radiation damage and a 20% cooldown reduction to the neutronic torpedo. The warp core is the temporal phased overcharge warp core. It's from the Butterfly mission of the Iconic War Arc. I'm using the free piece, all the free pieces of it. The core, the Omni, and the console. The console gives me high auxiliary power. And it also pushes critical chance and critical severity on high auxiliary power. It's two piece set is more Tetrion damage and three piece set is a Tetrion discharge. It fires on enemies within a 10 km sphere. I'm also using the Braden set. It's from an episode of the Lucari arc. The two piece set bonus, more accelerity power, three piece set bonus. More engine power. Its impulse engine has a micro pulse overcharge, creating a shock wave. Its shields give me higher turn rate and flight speed, and when some shield facings are depleted. On the back, I've loaded the Quantum Dark Matter Torpedo Launcher from the Discovery Reputation. Or the console. The two piece bonus is decking crit severity up to 25. This is the console from the Buran. Sensor ship, higher hull capacity, more shield hit points. By activating it, you're generating a electrical damage ion storm. The Mato console from the mission brush fire, more shield power, more engine power, flat turn rate. The Borg console from the reputation, more control expertise, more weapon power, more critical severity and chance. Literally, I'm tabulating. It's also from a mission. More hull resisting, hull capacity, more shield capacity, and it adds auxiliary power to shield power, which is useful on this build because we have high auxiliary powers. Science consoles, the EPG exciter, 
or AUX power, static, exotic vehicle generator, more shield power, more weapon power. The science consoles from the fleet, science lab or laboratory, higher exotic particle generator, damage, more control expertise. This is the Boronite Lance Weaponary from a lockbox, I think section 31. Passive trait is more APG damage, more control expertise, and if you activate the console, it adds exotic damage to your beam weapons. This is also a console from a mission. Ball on damage, this is useless, but we have more weapon power, more exotic particle damage, and more torpedo damage. And standard shuttles from the Sandstorm ship. Ship masteries, rubbish repairs, more hull plating, higher critical chance. Plus 10 halpons. Trades, ship trades, astrophysics, plus EPG, plus strain expertise, plus perception, beam damage, plus exotic damage, higher power levels, more crit severity. More projectile damage, more critical chance, critical severity, plus exotic damage, cooldown for uh, photonic fleet, higher warp core and EPS potential, trades all hands on deck, reduces recharge time for bridge officers and captain's abilities. Tricks of the trade Activating auxiliary power to structural integrity field Minus 20% weapon power cost for yourself and allies We also have Auxiliary or structural command abilities Activating, activating auxiliary to structural or any command bridge officer abilities This Uses the same Bridge officer ability to trigger its effects. Electrified anomalies. Exotic damage anomalies deal electric damage. Spore infused anomalies. The anomalies did a lot of. Electric damage too, and redirecting arrows, enlarging the time of fire at will. The space abilities plus critical severity plus critical chance, stacking crit chance, and damage based on auxiliary power levels. Stations. Polarized hull. Energy siphon. More energy for the beam weapons. First tactical is torpedo spread. Fire at will. The other one uses command. Concentrate firepower for higher torpedo damage. And fire at will again. Here we have engineering team repairs, auxiliary power to structure integrity field. This triggers this and this. Command abilities over overwhelm images and suppress and barrage. And the other science abilities gravity well one, Titan Swift one science teams.
So let's show this ship at work. Listen up. The war has not been going well for the Federation, and the Klingons are advancing to our position. We need to hold off their ships until reinforcements can arrive. We expect the Klingons to attack in waves. Their smaller, faster ships are hungry for battle, and won't wait for the rest of their fleet to arrive in one group. As the fight progresses, their heavier ships will show up. Hold them off until more army ships can get here.
let's have a look on the ship model. The Cardenas class was designed for Star Trek Discovery. They showed it in the first season at the Battle on the Banner Stars. It also was used for Captain Lorca's ship, the Buran. But I don't think we have saw it within the series. Its 25th century counterpart is called Buran class. It's quite different from the original model. It's sleeker. It looks more dangerous. The hull and the saucer section are one part. Dana's class with Buran Har looks like a fast, tough ship showing its agility using the Cardenas hull and the Buran gives this ship a tougher look, more dankier and dangerous. I use this combination in this video. We have a lot of hull materials, the discovery types, if you like it, or the newer ones. I step with this fleet and talk pattern. I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.